وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول رحمه الله يسأل سبحان الله سبحان الله ما سمعت بصاحب حديث لا يقوم بالليل Exalted is Allah, exalted is Allah. I haven't heard of a person who's out there to seek knowledge and attain knowledge, who wants to learn the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu and he doesn't pray at night. It's true, it doesn't make sense. Why does it not make sense? Because Allah is saying to you, who has dua, and there's no one more in need of Allah than a student of knowledge. Every day you want to attain more new knowledge. صح? You want to learn something new, right? And this is the time that you call unto your Lord and you ask him, oh Allah, increase me in this. Ya Allah, Ya Rabbi, this mas'ala is not going into my head. Oh Allah, make me understand it. This story also took place with Imam Ahmed again, in another place, with a person who he traveled with. It was a journey, they were both traveling. And when he, they traveled, the man said, the man used to pray when he was a muqeel, when he was a resident, but he never prayed when he was traveling. And so the man didn't pray. And then Imam Ahmed said to him, when he said to him, why have you, why are you not praying? He said, I'm a musafir, I'm a traveler. Ahmed said, what in kunta musafir, even if you're a traveler. So from Ahmed, rahimahullah, he believed, rahimahullah, that, that the person needs to pray. And then Ahmed said to him, in anger of what he said, he said, Hajj Masruq, Masruq ibn al-Ajda, who was older than Ahmed, and the senior tabi'in, he said, فَمَا نَامَ إِلَّا سَاجِدًا He never ever slept except, whenever he slept was in sujood. That's where he spent his life sleeping. He was always in sujood. Ahmed said this, rahimahullah. He was so much ibad that he would never get, he would never designate or place a time where he would sleep, Masruq. His sleeping time would always take place whilst he was praying. When he went to sujood, he got so tired, he slept there. It would happen to him. Qala Shaykh Taqiyuddin, Fihi annahu yukrahu li ahli al This is something he pointed out now. Uh, Ibn Muflih, rahimahullah, Shaykh al-Islam Taymi, sorry. Taqiyuddin Ibn Taymi al-Harrani, he said, Fihi, in this is what? Annahu yukrahu li ahli al That is dislike for a person of knowledge. Tarku qiyam al to leave of what? Pray qiyam al layl Wa in kanu musafirin, even if they're travelers. As a student of knowledge, I remember I said something, there's unique things for you that other people don't share with you. This is something you need to, you've now taken it on yourself. Things that are sunan, that are voluntary things, they become on you greater. So you can't. The second thing that the Shaykh Rahimahullah said to him is, Salli ma kutiba laka fi akhiri layl wa khtim salataka bin witri. Salli, pray, ma kutiba laka fi akhiri layl. Pray. What has been written for you the last night, the last of the night, waqtim salatika bil witr, and then try to complete your night prayer with witr. Shaykh Mullah Uthaymin says, as the Prophet Sallallahu said in a famous hadith, ij'alu akhira salatikum witra. The Prophet said, make your last prayer witr. The person prays witr. Do that. Then the Shaykh Rahimahullah he said, حافظ على ما تيسر لك من أذكار الصباح قل مئة مرة لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك ولو الحمد هو على كل شيء قدير. The Sheikh says, try to protect to reading the morning morning dawn prayer, uh, the adhkar sabah in the morning by saying a hundred times لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. Say this a hundred times. And Abu Huraira narrated in his from the Prophet and Muslim and Bukhari in their Sahih, that the Prophet he said, Man qala la ilaha illallah. The Prophet said, Whoever says la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, lawul mulk wa lawul hamdu, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Anyone who says that, anyone who says that, fi yawmin mi'ata marrah, and one day, anyone who says it a hundred times, kanat lahu adlu ashr al-qabil. It's like he freed ten snakes. Wa kutibat lahu mi'ata hasana. And it's written for him a hundred rewards. عنه مئة سيئة. And a hundred sins will be eradicated and cleared off your record. وكانت له حرزا. And this will be a shield for you. من الشيطان يومه ذلك. This will be a shield for you from Shaytan that day حتى يمسي until the evening. 
ولم يأتي أحد and no one that day has come with something better than you مما جاء به إلا أحد عمل أكثر من ذلك except a person who said more more than more لا إله إلا الله than you have if you say a hundred times لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير a hundred times you are the best person of that day a hundred times there is no one whatever a person does that day the prophet's hadith is that you have done better than them unless he says a hundred and one time he's you're the better still the best is that something that's hard on the tongue to say that a hundred times a day and what is it for you hirzan it's also a shield for you mina shaytani from shaytan student of knowledge needs that because shaytan's effort at a student of knowledge is far greater than a normal person sah? it's multiplied waswas this do this say this act in this way hundred times and he does that yeah, wallah, you're going to see differences in your life rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'a shaykh uh, muhammad ibn salih uthaymin the ulama are nasiheen they're very sincere in their advice and wallahi they give you things that you can live your life with and it will change it for the better then the shaykh rahimahullah he said salli rak'atay duha then pray the two rak'at duha salatul duha pray it abu huraira said Awsali Khalili Bithalathin. He said, My loved one, the Prophet, he advised me three things. And then from the three he mentioned is what? Warak Atayid Duha. Warak Atayid Duha. He advised me to pray the Duha, the dawn prayer. Point number five that the Shaykh Rahimahullah mentioned is Hafid ala adkari al Masai Matayasara laka minha. Hafid, save God. Ala adkari al Masai. Safeguard the evening adhkar that you do. Ma tayassara laka min, min, la, ma tayassara laka minha, as much as you're able to do so. Do your adhkar. Safeguard them. Don't miss out on this. Your adhkar is sabah and your adhkar is masa. As long as that is on your tongue, you're of great station. You're of great benefit. Now the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he moves on to the way in which a person should attain knowledge. Rahimahullah. Rabi'an, the fourth. Now he's going to go into Al-Manhajiyatul Italib Al-Ilm, the methodology of a student of knowledge. The Shaykh Rahimahullah, he said, Ihris ala hifdh kitab illahi ta'ala. Strive to memorize in the book of Allah. Waj'al laka and make for yourself. Kulla yawmin every day. شَيْئًا مُعَيَّنًا تُحَافُظُ عَلَىٰ كَرَاءَتِهِ Place for yourself every day a specific point or a specific amount in which you're going to memorize and read. وَلْتَكُنْ قِرَاءَتُكَ بِتَدَبُّرٍ وَتَفَهُمٍ And let your recitation be a recitation of contemplation and pondering and understanding. وَإِذَا عَنْتَ لَكَ فَائِدَةً أَثْنَاءَ الْقِرَاءَةً فَقَيِّدْهَا And if you... Support yourself, or you come across, or you come across, or you tread over a benefit whilst you're reading, then write it down, note it down. So, the Shaykh Rahimahullah here tells us the memorization of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Talib al Ilm, the student of knowledge, gives importance to the book of Allah, he gives time to memorize it every day, one page will not harm you. Yeah. Are you with me, brothers? Every single time a person um, places an amount for them. If you memorize, brothers, if you memorize an ayah a day, do you know how long it's going to take you for, for you to finish the Quran? Every day, just one ayah. 17 years. 17 years you can finish the Quran. And some of us are going to live for never another 17 years after this advice and will probably not finish the Quran. If you do one ayah a day, are you there brothers? If you do a page a day, you finish the Quran in a year or something. For one year you finish the Quran or something. Are we together? It's so easy. Break it down. Look at yourself and your strength and your ability. Just place 
don't have to go. No one's telling you you have to memorize five, seven pages a day. صح? Just play something very small for yourself that you know. Stick to that. An ayah a day, la bas. Don't stop it. Don't stop it. How much are you going to come out with after 15 days? You've got a page that you memorized that you didn't know 15 days ago. A page is roughly from 15 to 20 ayahs, generally speaking, maximum. Or even less than that. Sah? person does that. So memorize the book of Allah. The best thing a person memorizes is the kalam of Allah. Because Allah Ta'ala's kalam is greater than the kalam of everyone, the same way Allah is greater than everyone. Sah? The sta statement, its value is based on who said it, right? Have you seen sometimes you say something is not as powerful as then when the president say that? You're like, bro, I've said that a long time ago. Sah? But the president comes out and he says it and it's like, wow, everybody, it's on the newspaper, it's out there, it's a big red line, the sun, the metro, he said this, yo, he tweeted this. Why what he tweeted and what he said, it means that what you said tweet it doesn't have any value, but you might be saying more great things than he is, sah? It's because of who's saying it, sah? Wallillahi al ala. Allah's words are wise and the one who's saying it is noble and great, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walidalika. The statement in the hadith of Bukhari and Muslim, what is it? The best that is the the best action to Allah wa Ta'ala is what? The action that's most beloved to Allah brothers is that which is consistent and persistent and continuous, even if it's little, it doesn't matter. Allah loves something that's consistent, even if it's very little. Allah loves it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you're consistent, you don't stop. Finish and read the Quran. The second advice that the Shaykh gives is Ihrus ala khidd ma tayassar min sahih sunnat al Rasul, and then strive to memorize that which you're able to from the authentic hadith of the Prophet. Like he says, "Wamin dalik khidd umda tul hakam." Try to memorize umda tul hakam. The Shaykh rahimahullah taala specifically mentions book umda tul hakam, and the Shaykh rahimahullah has a sharh on this kitab. The kitab umda tul hakam is a kitab which is written on hadith al hakam. So. Abdul Ghani Abdul Wahid al Maqdisi authored this book. And it, it brings together all the hadiths which, which are in what? Sahihain, Bukhari and Muslim. Matafaka alayhi shaykhain. Matafaka alayhi al shaykhani. That which the two shaykhs have agreed upon. Bukhari and Muslim. He brings them together. Rahimahullah. And the shaykh has a sharah on it. He has a what? Sharah on the kitab Umdatul Ahkam. But the best sharah for Umdatul Ahkam are two sharahs. One by Ibn al-Daqiq al-Eid and the second one is Ibn al-Mulaqin, rahimahullah. Uh, Ibn al-Mulaqin is once called Al-I'lam bi Fawaid Umdat al-Ahkam. It's very, it's maybe 10 or something volumes. And the next one is Al-Ihkam, Al-Ahkam al-Ihkam, fi Sharh Umdat al-Ahkam. Written by who? Ibn al-Daqiq, Ibn al-Daqiq al-Eid. If a person gets both of those, will be benefiting a lot. To be honest, the kitab Al-Ihkam Al-Ahkam, Shaykhuna Shaykh Abdul Kareem Al-Khudayr said, if a person reads the kitab by Abdul Ghani Abdul uh, Ibn Dhaqiq Al-Eid, Sharah Al-Umdat Al-Ahkam, he said it's equivalent to reading the shuruh of the Kutub Sitta. That one volume kitab by Ibn Dhaqiq Al-Eid, if a person reads it, it's equivalent to reading the shuruhat, the explanation that have been put in six books of hadith, like Fatul Bari, like of Ibn Hajar, and the Fatul Bari of Ibn Rajab, and Aul al Ma'bud, and Tuhfat al Ahwadi, and the Umdat al Qari by Badr al Din. We were together. The Shuruhat have been put on Kutub al Sitta. He said it's equivalent to that. Well, I shake. When the Dakik is a Usuli, he said, What? Usuli, Muhaddith, and a Faqih. So reading that book. Point number three is إحرص على التركيز والثبات بحيث لا تأخذ العلم نتفا من هذا شيء ومن هذا شيء لأن هذا يضيع وقتك ويشتت ذهنك. الشيخ says strive to be على التركيز والثبات to be fast, firm and steadfast on one particular thing at a time بحيث لا تأخذ العلم نتفا من هذا ومن هذا شيء that you go and you take bits and bobs from everything. You got a bit of bob from here, listen. A little bob from here. You're not doing it properly. 
لأن هذا يضيع وقتك because that's going to waste your time ويشتت ذهنك and it's also going to what divide your brain ah. and it's going to what it's going to also divide your brain this is a very powerful point from the Shaykh رحمه الله تعالى which is what some people are very heedless of which is the person has to really أن يؤسس نفسه علميا يا أخي you have to feel yourself from the what from the base I give this example very often. I say, student of knowledge when seeking knowledge is like a house that has so many holes in it. Or a, a land that's got holes in it. If you want the land, the water, to come on the surface, what, what would happen? First of all, the water has to first of all fill up those holes, right? First, when you seek knowledge, you're never going to see it come out. You're not going to see it. It's not going to come to the surface. It's going to have to first of all fill all of the mistakes and all of the shortcomings and little errors here or there and correct it. As time goes on, then it starts coming onto the surface. The, durit, the mistakes that that person has, okay, the mistakes that that person has and the lack of ability here or there, it takes years for it to be, to be, be fully done. Does it make sense? So a person seeking knowledge sometimes for years that they don't feel like they're learning anything. Because what it's doing is building you from the foundation, it's building you upwards. So the student of knowledge needs to understand that knowledge should be studied from grassroots. Foundation is strong. There's no point in having a fluffy information at the top, but the foundation is very weak because it will collapse. Does that make sense? You can always tell a person who is fundamentally built is what? A person who is what? fundamentally built you can always tell and that's the, one of the unique things of Sheikh Ibn Rathaymin himself for him to say this it really has a waqa in the hearts of everybody who reads this it should do because Sheikh Ibn Rathaymin rahimahullah ta'ala was not known if you look at his works he's not known for nuqulat and kalam like that Zah? Sheikh Ibn Rathaymin is not known for that Ibn Rathaymin's maktaba is just that wall outside that's how big it was his maktab na'alim Zah? He didn't have a big library where wall to wall and this and you come in and you first floor, second floor, land. He didn't have all of that. Reason why? Shaykh Abdul Rahim studied the sciences fundamentally, he studied it. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Fundamentally, he studied it. He gave importance to grammar until Fabara Abiha, until he became an imam in the Arabic language. He studied usul until he became an imam in usul. He studied qawaid until he became an imam in qawaid. He studied fiqh until he became a faqih. He studied hadith until. Every field he studied, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he studied it from grassroots. <coughs> what did he do? He studied it from what? Well, he Shaykh Uthman, you always find that his shuruhat and his explanations are what? Something else. They are what? Wallahi, something that touched my heart, I'll tell you this. Shaykh Abdul Muhsin Abad was asked. Shaykh Abdul Muhsin Abad, Shaykh Mashur Hassan visited Shaykh Abdul Muhsin Abad. And. Uh, they were conversing and they were talking. Shaykh Mashhur said to him, to Abdul Mahsan Abad, why are not your tapes and your recordings not made into books? Why are they not tafrigat, not done from it? Because Abdul Mahsan has done shuruh of the six books. So he said, why hasn't it been made into a recording? Shaykh said, I'm not like Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin. He said, Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin, it was like he was reading from somewhere when he spoke. It was like he was reading from somewhere that when he spoke, and it was written. Do you guys know that the books that we have shown Uthaymin are all of them are his tapes? You literally think he was right, he wrote it. It's like a written book, the way it is. And you know when somebody's speaking, and their writing is always different, you can tell there's a different way of writing and, and speaking. So Sheikh Abdul Mahsa said, when we speak, we just speak, huh? Kalam in Shai. Abdi uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi means kalam, he said it's murattab, muhaddab, munaqqah. That's what it is. You look at his tapes and you look at the books, it's exactly the same, nothing has been taken out. They don't take chuck words out. Other scholars, when they do tafrigat and they basically transcribe their tapes, they ask for the book to be brought to them. And they take out so many things, don't say this, I don't want this, get rid of this, this is not right, this is not this. So when you listen to the tape and you look at the book, it's different. You can see things have been changed and modified. Let Shem know. And all of this was from his head. He's talking. It's very why fundamentally Sheikh Ibn was built. So everything in his head is organized. 
well organized, well structured when he's speaking. It comes from a person whose foundation is very strong. Does that make sense, brothers? That the whole sciences are well organized. No science is mixing up with another science for him. Each science stands independently and he looks at it individually, fundamentally, and to where he is. Rahimahullah, rahmatan wa sa'ad. So it's powerful. Then he says, Rahimahullah, ibda bi sigari al kutubi wa ta'amalha. Start with the small books and observe them. Jayidan, look at them very well. Ta'amul, ponder over it greatly. Thumman taqil ila ma fawqaha. And then move on to books that are greater than it. Hatta tuhassil al ilma shay'an fa shay'an. Until you attain knowledge bit by bit. Ala wajhin yarsukhu fi qalbika wa tatma'innu ilayhi nafsuk. You do it bit by bit. In a way which would what? will allow that knowledge to ground itself in your heart and it will allow it to be what? Tranquil in your soul. The majority and the overwhelming majority of scholars, they say start with, for example, Qawa'id al arbah And then a person does after that, Nawaqid al-Islam. And then what does a person do after that? Thalathat al-Usul wa adillatuha. And then what does a person do after that? Arba'in al-Nawi. And then the person, after that they go. Science, books after books, they memorize. They book, that's how they graduate. The person does those motons, memorizes them, learns them, and each one he doesn't move on unless he understood it and he memorized it. Remember what Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned in his kitab, Ikhtidat al-Sirat al-Mustaqim, he said, Allah gave the slave what? Quwwatan, two strengths. Quwwatul hifdi wa quwwatul fahmi. As a student of knowledge, when you're learning, every time you simultaneously try to run both of them together. Quwwatul hifdi, it shouldn't pass your quwwatul fahmi. And your quwwatul fahmi shouldn't pass your quwwatul hifdi. The strength of understanding and the strength of memorizing. You should always try to run them together and give importance to, to both of them. The fifth point that the Shaykh Rahimahullah mentioned is Ihris ala ma'rifatu usul al masail wa qawa'idiha wa qayyid. The Shaykh says, Ihris strive ala ma'rifati in knowing usul al masail, the foundations of sciences and issues, wa qawa'idiha and its principles. وَقَيِّدْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ Everything that comes by, note it down. A student of knowledge needs to have a little book, a little kitab. A student of knowledge needs to have a little pen. These books are very good. Can you give me a bath? I found one of these books, they're very good. This one, it only costs three pounds and ninety nine. It's nothing too big. You buy this book as you come as you as you're studying. You come across a benefit. You just you're reading a kitab al risala. You just write your little benefit here. Later, you will organize it. One each color for each each science that you're studying. What if it's a science pertaining to? Uh, are you there, brothers? If it's a science pertaining to. Hadith, you've got a color for it. If it's fiqh, you've got another color for it. If it's each subject, you have one book for it. You write your fa'idah in there. Wallahi later, the fawa'id that you've gathered from these books that you're studying, the benefits, the gems that you have, can, made, can be made into books. Volumes of books. That itself, wallahi, you can do muhadarat from it. Lectures, khutabs. Some of my khutbas are just a little benefit I came across when I was reading an ayah, for example, or a hadith, and a qawl that I came across. And that qawl of the hadith, or that hadith sparked a thought into my mind, maybe. And you know what? Especially on my Monday reflections, I only base it all on just fawa'i that I gather from books here and there. Nothing's organized. But, so it goes far. Well, what did he say, the poet? He said, Qayyidil ilma bil kitabah. Qayyid al-ilma bil kitabah. Hold down knowledge and restrain knowledge with what? By writing it. The poet, what did he say? وَمِنَ الْحَمَاقَةِ أَن تَسِيلَ أَن تَصِيدَ غَزَالَةً وَمِنَ الْحَمَاقَةِ أَن تَصِيدَ غَزَالَةً وَتَتْرُكْهَا بَيْنَ الْخَلَائِقِ الطَالِقَةِ He said, it's from the dim-wittedness that you, you hunt a deer. This is dim-wittedness, the poet said that you hunt a deer. And then guess what you do? Instead of taking that deer and tying it up, you just let it walk again. 
You've hunted it, you grabbed it, you got it. What do you do? You have to hold down the deer or the deer is going to go, right? So, that's how knowledge is. You came to this lesson. All this information has been brought to you. You hunted it. What you did was you hunted the knowledge. And it's so dim-witted that you're just going to let it go without, without holding it down, without keeping it with you. And all of that information has been given to you and all of it just goes. None of it has been written. They say, the weapon of a student of knowledge is a pen. So it's the weapon of a, a student of knowledge. This is a weapon. Everything. Without a pen, for him it doesn't. It doesn't. So, so, and every science, what do you try to do, brothers? Everything you try to learn a principle. Principles are good. They help you a lot. Many things will fall under it. Learning foundations are very powerful. Usul and qawaid are very good for a student of knowledge. Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin says, وَقَيِّدْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ يَمُرُّ بِكَ مِنْ هَذَا الْقَبِيلِ Everything that goes by, that has been said to you, write it down. فَقَدْ قِيلَ It was previously once said, مَنْ حُرِمَ الْأُصُولَ حُرِمَ الْوُصُولَ Anybody who is prevented and is prohibited from the usul is prevented and prohibited from reaching his goal. If you have not been allowed, Allah has prohibited from you to learn the usul, then you're going to be prohibited from the wusul, attaining your goal. You're not going to get your goal. Without these foundations, these fundamentals, you're not going to reach your goal that you're looking for, uh, that you're striving to attain. You're not going to. How is it that you're going to attain? How are you going to attain it? You're going to attain it by making sure that you study the foundations and the fundamentals. The person will. There's a kitab written by Khatib al-Baghdadi. He wrote a kitab called Qayyid. Qayyid al-Kitabah. Qayyid al-Kitabah. Mm -hmm. Based on the fact that the person just narrows down knowledge and keeps it together. And I always say this, a book when you read it, what you always read from that book is number one, how do you deal with a book that you have, that you've read? How do you deal with a book that you've gained? You've got this book. And how do you want to know that you've understood this book? What a person needs to do to that book is that they take that book and they rewrite that book by summarizing it. Most scholars, when they speak, there's sometimes repetition in their words. Sometimes they go off topic. It's not part of what they're meant to say. You as a student of knowledge are going to only strict yourself to what is part of the, the book. And anything that's from the istidradat, the points of topic that the Sheikh brings, the repetitions, the points that he's already spoken about, he's bringing back again, and he's repeating again. If you're able to be as strong as to take that out, not taking out what is important, then you've understood that book. But if you're taking out vital information, that's a problem. Your ikhtisar of this is null and void. Some mukhtasarat are not worth buying, because they've taken out gems and statements that are meant to be part of the book. The mukhtasar is only meant to be to take out the irrelevant things for now. Are we together? Number two, you are able to rewrite the content page. That book that you're reading, you write the fahras for it. Because remember, when I want to go back to that book later, and I want to go back to that book, I have to have a content page for it myself. Okay? Because the person who wrote the book, who did the tahqiq of the kitab, who did the who brought out this book, they put a content page based on what they understood from this, this, this particular chapter, right? You're, you might think there's something more, more apparent in this chapter that should be made the overall heading for it, and not this. Huh? And so what will it do for you as a student of knowledge? You will be able to go and reference these books quickly. Your research will be fast. Your way to get back to that book is quick. And not only that, you will reach far in reading. Wallahi, what you write always sticks. Once of writing is equal to 10 times of reading. Wallahi. If you read a book 10 times, and if you write it once, the whole book, it's the same. Powerful. The power, the brain and the writing, the, the way they are towards each other. <clears throat> the Shaykh, rahimahullah, the last and final one, he mentions... Rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'ah Naqish al-masail ma'a shaykhika aw man yathiqu bika 
اما او من يثق به علما ودينا من اقرانك the sheikh concluded by saying um ناقش discuss uh, with your sheikh issues discuss it with him or anybody whose knowledge you trust from your contemporaries discuss it with them when you're sitting with somebody don't just sit with them because of the sake of sitting with them this is what friends are meant to be for what is it that us friends are for that you benefit from one another Khalil ibn Ahmed al-Farahid what did he say he said the people are four types a person who I'm taking knowledge from who's my shaykh I'm benefiting from them I hang around with that person I want to be I'm benefiting that's my shaykh I'm going to learn from them that's one second is that is a person who you're I'm equal with and we're benefiting from each other he said I would be with that person third one is a person who's lower than I am but wants to benefit from me I'll give them my time the fourth one is he said someone who is none of the above he said that one I don't spend a minute with the fourth type I don't give no time to that person he's none of the above La huwa he won't benefit me I won't benefit from him then he won't benefit from me and last but not least he won't even benefit from me he's too arrogant to sit down and benefit from me so what is it we're together for? nothing just go you do your stuff I do my thing that's how you evaluate who you should be with so the aqran the contemporaries who are benefiting from each other their sitting is based on ilm and niqashat masail this issue but well, you said this kind of what about what about this if we look at this hadith how can we look at this hadith with adab with adab and etiquette the person will reach a, uh, a very high level of uh, knowledge if they do so uh, the shaykh's risala finishes there anything which i have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me shaytan and allah and his messenger are free from it Subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh